Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 25, it's Chucky Egg. Now this is perhaps the platform game that for many people defines the BBC Micro. Um, it's very, very well known and uh, it's got a very long pedigree. Um, it was released in 1983 by A&F Software, uh, the A&F standing for Doug Anderson and Mike Fitzgerald, and it was developed initially by Nigel Alderton uh, as a teenager. He actually took the pre-release of the game to A&F, uh, originally for the ZX Spectrum, and uh, Doug Anderson of A&F uh, took on the BBC Micro version for simultaneous release. Um, and also Mike Webb at ANF uh, did a release for The Dragon uh, around the same time as well. So it's a clever little platform game. Um, the player takes on the role of Henhouse Harry and he is tasked with collecting the eggs on each level. Uh, Chucky Egg had a sequel that came out uh, a little bit later on, Chucky Egg 2, but sadly it wasn't released for the BBC Micro. Uh, it came out for the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64 and the Spectrum, uh, but no BBC uh, edition. You will find other editions of Chucky Egg around on the internet, including on the complete BBC Micro games archive, um, but most of those, if not all of them, are uh, player hacks versions, um, so extended versions of the original game. Uh, there was even a Super Chucky Egg, uh, released as a mobile game in 2017, um, which shows that the game really did have quite an impact on those who played it back in the 80s, including on myself, uh, and it really is a very well-loved game. And I thought that's why I would bring it in as we reach the top 25 of the countdown, that we would start with Chucky Egg. So without further ado, let's get into the game. Okay, so let's start up Chucky Egg. Now it has quite the dramatic title sequence. A bit of a sort of rocket takeoff sound going on here. Very dramatic for what is actually quite. <laughs> there we go, even lightning strikes as well. Um, very dramatic for what is actually quite a gentle game. I think that probably is part of the appeal of Chucky Egg, as we'll see when we get into it. That it really is quite a sort of gentle, charming, humble game. Um, and I think that's, as I say, why it appeals uh, as much as it does. So we're going to change the keys because uh, I'm on an emulator and I want to make sure that they align with the keyboard, but we'll stick to the sort of classic controls. Uh, we're only going to play with one player. You can have up to four players, but it's that typical 80s style uh, multiplayer where basically each player plays in sequence. And here we are. This is Henhouse Harry. Um, he can roam around the platform collecting the eggs. Um, he can pick up grain, uh, which pauses the timer at the top for uh, a little while. Uh, also gives them a few extra points as well. Um, if the birds that you can see roaming around, I, I mean they're meant to be chickens, I have to say they look more like ostriches to me, um, but uh, if they if they get to the grain before you they will eat it, um, which can sometimes be an advantage, obviously it causes them to pause uh, when they do so. Uh, Henhouse Harry hasn't got any weapons, so as I say it is a very gentle platform game, there's no, there's no shooting of the, uh, of the ostriches as I'm, as I'm going to refer to them uh, it's a, if you like a sort of early example of a survival game really you have to complete your objective without dying um, but you don't have any means of sort of defense uh, not even a shovel like you do in monsters where you can at least trap the uh, the baddies uh, on this one you just have to avoid them um, so it starts off fairly gently as you can see there's not uh, not too much of a challenge in the early levels uh, really it's just a case of trying to maximize your points um, the faster you complete the level obviously the more bonus you get fairly common uh, game dynamic with arcade games and uh, yeah if you can get through these early levels quickly um, you get a bit more of a bonus uh, and that uh, every every 10,000 points I think it is um, you get an extra life you can see the lives up there represented by Henhouse Harry's hats now, I mean, the appeal of Chucky Egg, I think there's... Oh dear, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't very clever. It was a bit of a forced error there. Um, I think that the appeal of, of Chucky Egg, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons why I think people do love it. Um, one of them has to be that, although it is a very simple uh, game in the sense of the graphics, are, you know, they're quite, they're quite rudimentary, there's something very cute about them. I mean, Henhouse Harry with his quite portly belly there sticking out in front of him, there's something quite endearing about him as a, as a character. Um, you can see why you know, people would have enjoyed playing as him. And, and let's face it, there is something slightly bizarre about the game as well. It's not entirely clear why um, Henhouse Harry is trying to collect the grain as well as the eggs. I mean, you would think that the grain is there for the, for the chickens, or the ostriches. Um, not really sure why he's collecting it and why he gets points for doing so, but uh, 
And also why he, if they are chickens, why he's the same size as them. That's also a little bit mysterious. I mean, chickens also not being renowned for uh, being a particularly savage animals. Not really sure why they're a menace to Henhouse Harry. Perhaps he's been shrunk uh, to the size of a chicken. Perhaps that's what it's about. I mean, those eggs are pretty large compared to his body. Now, you'll have seen there with that rather comical fall through the platforms that um, one of the other things that Chucky Egg has in its favour, particularly on the BBC Micro Edition, is that it's got very clever physics. Um, physics counting against me there as I fell to my death. But uh, yes, it's very, very clever that if you jump at particular angles, you rebound off the different platforms. Um, there's a real sense of gravity as well, so you sort of plummet um, as you fall. The sound effects very much in line with the direction of travel uh, of Henhouse Harry. So as he falls, you can kind of hear the sound of the gravity almost, which is quite 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 clever. Um, Colour scheme wise, I think it's very easy on the eye as well. This sort of combination of yellow, green, and magenta with the cyan birds, I think, works really really well. And uh, yeah, it's not too much of a challenge to sort of get get the feel of the game. It definitely gets a lot harder the the longer that you survive for. Uh, no question about that, but it is it is a nice sort of easy game to get into. Um, it's not the sort of game where you can't even get past the first level. It's not sort of that sort of level of difficulty. You can make a decent amount of progress and feel like you are actually getting somewhere. So the first sort of four four to five levels are not too not too difficult. It does start to get a little bit harder when we get to the later levels. Which hopefully, I'll manage to do. Um, now on this level we've got a broken ladder which you can you can sort of basically jump from one ladder to the next which is quite quite fun. Uh, I do I like that little dynamic and that's something that uh, Henhouse Harry can do which the birds can't do so they they can only climb up to wherever the ladder sort of breaks off and then as you'll see that one at the bottom there has to climb back down and I managed to smash into them as well at the same time so that was uh, not not entirely intended but there you go. Um, it's quite a nice little jingle as well when you fall to your death. It sort of makes it feel like it, well, it wasn't so bad after all. Yeah, I've just noticed I'm not actually uh, making great progress. At oh dear, I've wasted another life. Dear, oh dear, he's making a lot of unforced errors here. Uh, I've only got one life left now and I'm only on level five. I'm hoping to do a little bit better than that. I, I, I mean, I, I deliberately didn't say in the introduction that one of the reasons why I like this game is because, um, compared to some others for the BBC, I'm actually quite good at it, although I don't seem to be demonstrating that very well at the moment. Um, so we'll try and see if we can make a bit more progress here. Um, I've got a couple more eggs there. You notice the, uh, the other little dynamic that you can do is you, if you're on the ladder and you jump... Um, provided there isn't a platform in between the ladder and the bottom, he just he jumps to the bottom, which is, I think is quite a nice little uh, nice little effect. There we go. That's the last egg. Now there we go. We've managed to ratchet up enough points to replenish a few lives up there, so that's pretty good. Um, now, when you get those piles of grain all together in a line, um, there is a temptation to just pick them all up at once. Obviously, you do get the points for doing that. But oh, there you go. <laughs> Love those little fools there. Uh, but if you do that, obviously you you do lose the um, the effect of pausing the timer because um, I think one if you pick up one pile of grain, it pauses the timer for a set amount. But if you continue picking up more grain, obviously it doesn't keep pausing it for longer. Um, so if you're on a level where the timer is an issue, which certainly I think level eight, I remember the timer is a bit of an issue because of the way the level is laid out. Um, you do need to preserve some of those grain piles if you want to keep keep the timer in check. Um, and I haven't mentioned it up till now. You'll notice that there is a large um, bird, sort of like a duck, I think, in the uh, the top right hand corner. Uh, sorry, top left hand corner, I should say. And that, in the um, early days of playing this game, certainly as a child, when I didn't tend to make a huge amount of progress with it, um, I just thought it was an effect. It's a nice sort of chirping bird up in the corner. But actually, um, as we hopefully will get to see if I manage to get past the eighth level, that bird becomes its very own menace. Um, so, oh dear. Oh, dear, oh dear, went right into his back. So the birds do start to become a little bit more difficult uh, on the on the on the later levels here, especially that one in the top right. He his particular pattern makes it a little bit tricky to. Okay, he's going to go up, down, and there we go. Right now we can get the egg over here. So. We've just got that last egg in the corner. Ah, ooh, hang on. No, not quite. There we go. 
quite a nice effect that if you do manage to nab the egg, um, even if you're falling to your doom at the same time, um, you still manage to complete the level. Now, level 7 is an in interesting one. It's got several platforms that are actually fake platforms. You will have noticed one of those just now. I managed to jump through it. Um, one of those little features of, a, of, an, of an 80s game where when you first discover things like that... Oh, dear. Um, you, uh, you, you're not entirely sure if it's intentional or not because it feels like you're defying the rules of the game. Um, it makes you think like you've discovered a bug, but actually they are intentional because, of course, if you couldn't jump through that particular platform, you'd never be able to make any progress beyond it. So, um, yes, it's, uh, it is a, a nifty feature. Um, Notice that in some, uh, some other BBC games, including Palace of Magic, which is another favourite of mine, there are, there are certain areas on the, uh, on the level where walls are not what they appear. And Chucky Egg is one of the uh, early pioneers. Here we go, there's another one there. Or well, a set of them, in fact. Oh, oh dear. So it is quite inf it is quite enjoyable just sort of throwing yourself from platform to platform and just uh, just seeing what happens really sometimes to see how the physics will affect you and where you'll end up. You can sometimes strike it lucky and end up in just uh, just the right place, and other times you fall straight down a hole. So <laughs> you have to be careful how you uh, how you hurl yourself to oblivion. Now that bird is just going left and right up there. I'd quite like to get up there if I can. Oh dear, it's too fast for me. Now, how am I doing on the life front? Uh, ooh, okay, I'm on my last life, so better be careful now. I don't want to squander the progress I've made. I really would like to get through the first eight levels at least so that you can see what happens um, after that because it's quite, quite enjoyable. I mean, the whole game is enjoyable, but that partic the particular feature I have in mind is, is quite a... Oop, I, I, I do like that little sound about there. Right, I think I can jump onto the ladder by jumping across. Hang on. There we go. Oh, no! Ooh. I was lucky there. Um, yeah, so, I, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons, as I said at the start, why you know there's a lot of love for Chucky Egg, but I, I do think that it just brings together lots of different aspects that just all work together really well. Um, the sound effects, the, the simple but very cute graphics, a very gentle, as I said at the start, very gentle kind of gameplay. Oh, this bird's following me all over the place. A uh, very gentle kind of gameplay. And um, yeah, you just, I think it's a game that appeals both to children and to grown-up players, as I now am, um, in equal measure, I think. And you can understand why it is so well-loved. There we go. Managed to claim the last egg and we're on to level eight. Hopefully I get another life. Mm, not yet. I need to hope I get a few uh, few eggs. Maybe maybe I'll just grab all these grains and see if I can get some enough points for another life because I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to complete level eight with just the with this last life. This is a deceptively tricky level. It doesn't look like it. There's no moving platforms going on. It doesn't look like there's too much in the way of threat, but um, there really is. Uh, it's it's uh, the way that the birds move on this level means that you you have to time your positioning very well so that you don't come a cropper. So let's go come it down here. Yeah, you see, they they the, the sequencing of the birds is such that it can be quite difficult to get to where you want to get to because uh, they tend to sort of pen you in. All right, now let's see. I'll just grab that egg there. I'm really trying to see if I can get a few extra points. There we go. At least I've bagged myself another life now. That's that's makes me feel a little bit less uh, uncomfortable. You do need, as I say, at least at least one extra life on this level because the timer is your is your real enemy on this one. Um, because of the way that the birds move, getting to the top and collecting the eggs, because um, you have to make multiple attempts, obviously. You get to the top, claim an egg, and then you have to go back up again. Um, it does really run down the timer. Hmm. Okay. Uh, no. Oh dear, what am I doing? I'm going to go over there. Right. Go. Oh, oh dear. Whoa. Now. Okay, that's got that egg. Uh, okay, just wait for him to clear past. Uh. 
Now, the, the, you will probably be thinking, well, the, the birds don't move particularly fast on, on these levels, so, you know, they're not too much of a threat. But, um, yeah, if you really get far into the game, which I'm not expecting to do necessarily in this review, but if you really get into the later levels, the birds not only uh, start to grow in number, I think, but they also get faster as well. Um, plus the added menace, as hopefully we'll see. If I manage to clear this level, you'll get to see the other... Um, dynamic that Chucky Egg has to offer, which really sort of takes the game to, to the next level. Pardon the pun. Okay, here we go. Right, we got up to the top now. Timer is... Oh, no! Oh. If you're wondering why I have done that on a few occasions, uh, I don't like to blame my tools, but I think that I think my jump key is a little bit sticky on my, on my laptop. So I think if I was playing this on the, uh, the, the true beeb, with its with its mighty keyboard, I don't think I'd be making quite so many f forced errors. But for some reason, I don't quite engage the uh, the jump key in time, and then I fall off the edge. Not deliberately trying to uh, get rid of Henhouse Harry here. Oh no! I've done it again. Bad workman blames his tools, I know. But uh... okay. Oh dear, the time is really running out now. We're down to the last hundred. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Come on, we just need to get two more eggs. Oh, how if I wouldn't keep falling off the edge like that? Come on, here we go. Right, now if that bird can just go away. Oh, it's really running out. Okay, hang on. Oh, no, I, well, I mean, I had to claim that one, but that wasn't actually the one I wanted. And the timer's run out. But I had one life in my pocket, and there's one egg left. So all I need to do now is just get to the top, and then that way at least we'll clear the level. So that was my stated goal for this uh, for this video review was to at least get past the first eight levels because that gives some idea of what happens next in Chucky Egg. Here we go. Right, and we should get a, quite a hefty bonus for that. It should give me yes. Oh, no, it hasn't quite given me another life. Now you can see. The, uh, the bird in the top left has been released from its chains and it will hunt you. Um, I mean, you have to say, as, 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 as monsters go, it's possibly the cutest monster in any video game or arcade game that there is. Uh, I mean, it, it, looks like, it looks like a little duck uh, that you might find in a bath, let's be honest. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that nightmares are made of, but it is quite tricky to avoid it. Um, so really what you need to do now is just dupe it into flying down because it's a bit slower than you are so you just need to try and get it to go in the in the opposite direction to the way that you want to go there we go and we'll just lure him down there and then if i get up that ladder again i can claim the egg there we are so yes what as you'll probably have noticed that level looked familiar um that was level one uh, but replayed as level nine with the uh <laughs> with the danger duck I think I'm going to call it the Danger Duck. So the Danger Duck um, is now the only menace uh, on the next eight levels. So it's a repeat of levels one to eight, but with this uh, flying duck um, trying to hunt you down. And if you manage to, which I doubt that I will, but if you manage to get through the next eight levels again, uh, you go back to level one with both the uh, Danger Duck and the Ostriches. Um, I think moving at their original pace and if you manage to do those eight levels again, uh, it goes back to the beginning with Danger Duck and the Ostriches, um, but the Ostriches move even faster. So it really is quite the, uh, quite the difficulty setting at that stage to keep going. Um, but it will continue to loop. I think if you then complete the eight levels once more, it does loop back to the beginning, but it just does so um, with the same threat level. So the, uh, the Danger Duck and the Fast Ostriches. Ooh, oh dear, I'm trying to hitch a ride on the duck there. I don't know if it is meant to be a duck. It looks like a rubber duck from a bath, that's why I'm calling it that, but I I, I don't know if it's meant to be a, a giant chick, perhaps. I mean... I don't know. But uh, some, kind of, some kind of bird that really isn't very happy about me going around and collecting all these eggs, I suspect. Um, as I imagine no bird would be happy with that, really. Right. Okay, well, we'll see how far we get. Um, I'm pleased that I've managed to make it this far because uh, it does, as I say, give you the uh, the idea of what the game is all about. And I mean, 
the graphics surrounding the way that that bird moves are really very good. I mean, it doesn't. There's no. Um, there's no clashing with the with the items that it flies in front of. Uh, it's yeah. It's very well. Very well animated. And it's a clever, yeah, it's a clever bit of game ingenuity, really. A way of recycling the levels with, you know, additional threat, or, or at least a different kind of threat, um, which makes the levels feel different, even though the actual layout is uh, obviously the same. I was saying in the introduction that there are a number of um, player hacked editions of Chucky Egg that you can find uh, on the BBC Micro Archive. Um, some of those are good fun. They're basically... Um, the same game, you know, still, still Chucky Egg, still Hen House Harry, uh, but with um, different level layouts. So basically, a sort of re um, reimagining with extra levels and so on. Um, I said at the start, it's a shame Chucky Egg Two didn't come out for the Beeb, Although, I, having read reviews of it online, apparently it wasn't as well received as the original game. So perhaps it's uh, no bad thing that it didn't come to the BBC. Uh, obviously, Chucky Egg was also available for the Electron. I should have said that at the start. Um, it's it's a very popular game on the Acorn Electron as much as it was on the Beeb. Oh dear, I'm blitzing through my lives at this point. And I think it's also fair to say that Chucky Egg, probably because it was a very gentle game, um, and you know, it's not there's no violence or anything involved. It was a classroom a classroom game. I think you you know, although there was nothing educational about it. It was one of those games that you would quite commonly find in, in schools, um, usually res reserved for a wet play break or a um, end of term sort of special when we used to get to do fun things on the last day of term. Uh, Chucky Egg, as I say, is one of those games that just seemed to be lurking around in school classrooms for some reason. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just... It's just a really sweet game, and uh, it, you know, it may not have some of the uh, sort of advanced effects and machine coding um, grandeur that some of the other games for the Beeb had, but there is just something very, very appealing about it, and uh, yeah, it, it definitely deserves to be in the in the top twenty-five of this countdown. I think. Oh dear, that was my sticky key again. I didn't deliberately just commit suicide there. Okay, we've got up to level 14 now. I'm still managing to, broadly speaking, evade the danger duck. Uh, oh, oh dear. Oh, it came a bit close there. Obviously, on these later levels, it is harder to avoid the duck because you've got these large open spaces with the, uh, the, the moving platforms, which means that it's not quite so straightforward to just move around at will um, to avoid it. Okay, oh, now I've just got a few more eggs over on the... Oh on that side if we just get to those oh no now, you see without the duck i would have fallen onto safe platforms below but uh yeah not so this time around um obviously as i always say with these uh, reviews if you remember chucky egg if it was a, if it was a favorite of yours do leave me a comment I'm always keen to hear from people who regale their memories of chucky egg um, it's game over for me, as you can see, so I'm not an inconsiderable score, though. I'm quite quite happy with that. Um, but yes, do do share your memories of Chucky Egg. I'd, I'd love to hear from people that played the game, that, that enjoy it. Um, and indeed, if you've played it on, on other machines besides the Beeb, um, I'd be keen to hear about any differences that you've noticed, having now seen what it looks like on the BBC. Um, but yes, I think we'll leave it there. I think that's given... Chucky Egg, a decent run through. It's, as I say, one of those real platform defining platform games, uh, if I can call it that. Uh, a game with a lot of love, um, not just from me, but I think from most people that uh, have fond memories of, of the Beeb. So there it is. Um, that's Chucky Egg. We're going to leave it there, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed that review. And until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>